Hi, everybody. I'm Amanda. This is Kevin. Hi there. We're with A. Smith Gallery, and we're here today with Sylvie Redman. Hi, Sylvie. <laughs> and we Hi. are um, going to talk about her project called Together Adrift. Sylvie won the Jurors Award for Black and White, like last year, that was jurored by um, Ann Jastra. And actually, this image that she received the award with is also in this body of work. So you'll get to see it. It's really, really wonderful. So, Kevin, would you like to read? Better put my glasses on. Sylvie's bio. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Sylvie Redman, born in 1980, is an interdisciplinary artist and mother working in lens-based media, alternative photographic processes, and text. Her work investigates personal narratives that explore exploring surrounding family, motherhood, theme, and memory, I mean time and memory. After an early start, Redman returned to photography in 2019, following a 14-year career in education. She holds a certificate from the International Center of Photography in New York City, an MA in educational, <clears throat> excuse me, educational policy studies from the University of Wisconsin Madison, and a BA in human development and environmental studies from Colby College. She is currently a student in the long-term photo book program through the Penumbra Foundation and the Image Threads Collective. All right, wonderful. Yeah. Well, do you mind reading your statement for us? Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay, the project is called Together Adrift. Uh, every summer after my parents' divorce, my father would load all three of us into a rented RV and we would wind our way out of the city heading south to Shenandoah National Park. These sticky southern summers defined my childhood and the memories continue to loom large. Retracing the familiar footpath of my own childhood, this ongoing series pays homage to my children's burgeoning experiences in the wild spaces we encounter on the road. The childlike marvel that comes from catching a grasshopper, the simple joy of skipping rocks in a mountain lake, and the intimate simplicity of being free from technology while so surrounded so completely by family. Leaving behind the familiar comforts and schedules of home, our experience is boiled down to the essentials. Family bonds shift and strengthen as if the tendrils of connection grow quicker in close proximity. Although a personal inquiry Together Adrift contemplates the broader cultural questions surrounding identity and belonging in the modern world. How does our reliance on technology affect our relationships? How do we instill a love and respect for nature in a fast paced world? How are we shaped by the places we call home? Together Adrift invites us to consider these questions that anchor us to our modern world. Wonderful, That's wonderful, lovely. really nice. Well, I'm going to screen share your images now. Hi. Here you go. Can you see that? Yep. Very good. So how old are your kids now? Uh, right now they are 11, 8, and 4. Wow. Ooh. You're busy. <laughs> <laughs> so this this project started. This will be this summer will be the third summer of this project. So these images are from our first summer. Okay. So you uh, you said something in your statement that really struck me. Uh, it it goes while surrounded so completely by family. That's a just part of one of your sentences. And on the surface, it's, it, it's a simple descriptive sem sentence about your experience, but not really simple at all. It can speak to how in the past we were so surrounded completely by family, but, but there was no TV. If there was, there was only three channels, no computers, no internet, Facebook, Instagram, no Sony Walkmans, no Bluetooth, no malls. I think that one statement contains all of what you're saying about even, gra I think that one statement contains all of what you're saying about even grasshoppers. Can you talk about this? Yeah, for sure. Um, so like on, on the surface, the most obvious thing is sort of the proximity, of course, deeply shapes our experience sort of being, there's something about the physical space limitations that seems to pull us all closer together when we're only in this van for an extended period of time, you know, you're forced to share and communicate and engage simply because of the limits 
of the space. But, but I think on the deeper level, when we leave our physical house behind, you know, we also leave behind work and chores and friends and technology and schedules and obligations and all these things that are built into the fabric of our lives, but in some ways really just complicate our lives. And by shaking up this routine, I feel like there's all of a sudden this space where we're able to engage and turn to each other to fill in the the missing spaces that are taken up by all those other things in our day to day lives. Um, and I think it's especially striking in our current society. Kevin, you just referred to sort of the time in the past when technology wasn't so prevalent, but especially in these modern times when you know, I'm of the age where my childhood was free from a lot of this technology and sort of straddled into my adulthood. And so I'm aware as a parent, sort of the implications for that as children. So I think it's especially pronounced when my children who are so accustomed to these technologies being woven into everyday life, all of a sudden no longer have it. It's it, it's this space to engage and communicate and be together in a way that feels really special and unusual in in some ways. Um, and I find when we're out, the children, my children, they're close and they spend a lot of time together, but they really lean into their relationships with each other in a, a really different way when we're out in these spaces. Um, and they like find amazing ways to create their own fun, whether it's these like long, intricate, imaginative games they're talking about when we're hiking, or whether it's the, you know these riddles they're coming up with that we're sharing each other with each other as we're you know spending time outdoors, or whether it's like you know these inventive games they create with sticks or with their hammock or whatever it is that surrounds them, um, or whether it's just you know helping with the family tasks that are required to sort of keep our family unit running when we're out, you know, like my oldest son is, has taken an interest in starting the fires. So he starts, you know, the campfires every night and that's his, he, he, he loves that. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's just, it's profound. And then when we're in nature, it's this, this opportunity for them and for us to engage sort of without distractions in the natural world. Um, and I think, I think that's just a, it's just a gift. It's something that, you know, um, as a parent, you, I try to provide for and we spend time outside, but this sort of limitless time outside feels really, feels really special. Um, Whereas, you know, if I say like after school, we go play outside, but we're limited by dinner time or we're limited by, you know, soccer practice or what, whatever it may be, it, it just feels it feels different and slower. And I feel like for, for me personally, there's this like an uh, element of nostalgia thinking back to my childhood and this time where life felt slower. And maybe this is just something I'm making up as an adult, <laughs> like thinking back to the past, but it. Um, but it, it feels like a really special, and like even with my partner, um, when we're no longer have our routines and the work in the same way, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of work to be on the road. Like when dinner's done, like you have to wash dishes right away because, you know, if you have a, like a limited supply of water and you need the dishes for the next morning. So there's like a lot of chores and tasks that need to get done to get, to operate smoothly within this family unit. But it just, for some, it without the outside constraints it just feels like we operate more as a team or a, it, it just it feels like a different entity in unbound from the the day-to-day -day life if that makes sense yeah, absolutely. absolutely so uh, are they so do you end up going home with different kids <laughs> no, we only, we only have five seats in our van, so we can't. <laughs> no, no, what I mean is, 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 is there a, is there a visible change, a noticeable change in them after it, they? It, it's, it's funny. I, I mean, almost immediately, they, they really enjoy these trips. And 
um, when we come back, there's they have a hard time going back to their bedrooms because when we sleep in the van, we have sort of a double bunk in the back. So three of us sleep on the bottom and two of us sleep on the top. And I think it was like the first summer, my youngest was sort of like figuring out his numbers and he didn't he didn't want to stop sleeping in the van. He really liked it. And so he was like, he wants to sleep in it. And it is quote was 30 million, 80, 80. So he wanted to sleep in it 30 million, 80, 80 other nights. And I was like, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll go back soon. But, um, <laughs> but, but there really is sort of this sense of, of calm and, and peace. I feel like when we get back from, and sort of a slow transition back into real life, it's not like they're excited. I mean, they're excited to be back, but it, it feels like we we could keep going, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I think you've already spoken to a lot of this, but uh, so can you speak about what you've learned through your project about relationships, love and respect for nature and how we are shaped by the places we call home? Sure. Um, I, I think, yeah, I, I, just to reiterate, I think something I said, I, I feel like it's this, this, experience in nature that's unbound from time. Um, and when we're out there wholly, it, it feels like a different experience for them. I, I mean, I've spent time going on backpacking trips on trail. And I think there's this kind of magic that happens when you're, even you're with people on a trail group that you might not partner up with normally, or they might not be your friends, but there's sort of a reliance on them and the natural world, world around you. I feel like there's like a level of comfort and granted my kids don't like love mosquitoes or they they don't <laughs> love ticks, like none of that stuff but there's a comfort in the discomfort for them and there's a comfort in sort of exploring and pushing the boundaries of of like understanding the natural world um like for instance this winter we went up not in the van but we went up um up north and we have had like a mild winter and like very little snow here in Minneapolis, which is very strange. But we went up north to the Boundary Waters and it was like the coldest winter weather we had had. It was like negative 30. And we got there at nighttime and the first thing the kids did was like hop, pull on their snowsuits and like went and like face planted in the snow. <laughs> but there's just like a, there's just like a comfort and a, a joy in the nature because they've had time to really experience it. So, um, so I think it's just, for me as a parent, that's something I really want to give my kids. And it, sometimes it feels hard to do when we're in the middle of schedules and day-to-day and -day life with school and whatever it is. So, um, you know, one of the, one of the feelings I get from this project is that home is not necessarily a concrete place, right? Mm -hmm. Home is something deeper. It's it's deeper than that. So did creating this project change your idea of what home is? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think and culturally we're sort of like taught to think about home as like a physical building and you think about like going back to your the home you grew up in and like that is the the physical space that's freighted with memories and um times that you were together with your family and i think in 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 some ways we've sort of uncoupled that understanding in these trips and i think what I imagine when my children look back on their childhood and think about the times that they have are wistful for sort of connections with family, they'll think about the van and they'll think about the times that we were on the road and they'll think about the natural spaces. And I, I, I feel like there's a real opportunity to be gained when you think about home, more about the relationships of the people you matter and less about the, the physical space that, that provides comfort, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. So if your partner was to speak about this, would he would he have the same feelings? I, I think so. He really, yeah, I, I think he would, I think he would say very similar things. 
um, I think we would we would love to to be able to go out for longer than we than we are. Um, Brian's work only lets us go out for two weeks at a time, so that's sort of our maximum stretch. I think we would we would love to be able to go for sort of a whole summer and go exploring. Um, but but I think he also feels the shift in in the family when we're on the road. This is, this is really wonderful. These are all really, really great images. Well done. Thank you so much. So it's been a, it's been a fun challenge. I mean, I hope to continue this project for as many years as my children will tolerate it. <laughs> so this is sort of the, the beginning, the beginning of the project. And I'm curious to see how it will shift and change as they get older and enter their teen years and um, how both the, it'll shift visually, visually, but also how our experience will shift as a family as we navigate some of those, the growth the independence that the right. boys will experience as they get older. Do you have any other uh, photography projects in the works? Yeah, I have, I have several, <laughs> several projects going. Um, this is this is my major long term one. I mean, I also photograph my boys at home, um, but I'm working on a project about my father passed um, in October of last year, and so I'm working on an image and text um, project about grief and about his passing, but also about motherhood and parenting. Um, so I've written a bunch of poetry, and I'm pairing that with images. Um, so I'm working on that through the Penumbra Foundation right now, the photo book program. So my hope is to have a maquette for that at the end of the year, yeah. at least an initial version of the maquette, because, you know, with these things, they can take on many iterations and yes, exactly. <laughs> take a long time to germinate. So, right. So do you intend to make a book of this project? You know, and as a long term project, that's kind of my ongoing question. So this is a series of images from the first summer. Um, so I have a series of images from last summer and um, we have our first van trip scheduled for Mother's Day weekend. So I'll start a, I'll start this year's body of work then. Um, but I think the question for me is, is how, how and when it wants to become a book, um, whether that's, you know, retrospectively you know, 10 years after the project is finished or whether it's year by year. Um, I've been play, I've been playing with the images in, in book form, but I don't have anything. A any it's not clear to me what they want to be yet. Right. So my, my hope would be eventually that they would be that they would be a book, but yeah, I still I feel like the project's new enough that it needs to grow a little bit. Yeah. Well, Sylvia, it's been great talking to you. This is good stuff. Thank you both so much. And and uh, your words are great too. Thank you both. It's it's an honor. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. And good to meet you. It's good to meet both of you. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, thanks again. And, uh, Thank you both. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Yeah, you too. Me too. Bye. Bye-bye.